Hey guys. Hey guy. Hey girl. I just took my brother to the airport. So he's gone now. I'm glad. I'm glad I have the place, my, my space again. It was, it was hard having him in town for so long, for 10 days straight. It was, uh, it was kind of like having a pet. I felt like I had to be here all the time. He wasn't gonna be having fun. But then like while he was here after a while, I just started figuring, you know what, fuck it. I just gotta enjoy myself and hang out and have fun with him. And that's what we started doing. And actually by the end, last night, I really wished that he wasn't leaving. <sighs> it sucks. It's nice to have the space again, but like I, I was really starting to really play magic cards last night. And then about, we played for a while actually, it was really fun, we were laughing, having a good time. Um, talking. About four o'clock in the morning, I got a call from Amanda, who was on her way back from work, and her tire blew out. Her front right tire just exploded, fell apart. She was freaking out. And I was like, did you call AAA? She said, no, I called Volkswagen, but it's, no. She said, okay, I'll, I said, call roadside assistance. So she said, okay. So she called me first, which is kind of weird. Like, if my car broke down, the first person I called would not be Amanda. It would be roadside assistance. And that, I was like, I got kind of pissed off. I was like, what does she think? Like, if anything goes wrong, Ian will save it the day. Ian will take care of it. Like, why does she have that mentality? But then I started thinking, no, I'm not going to get angry about this. You know, I, I am... I do spend a lot of time with her, and I have created the situation where I want someone to feel that they can rely on me, in a way. But still, I would prefer that she called roadside assistance and then called me. Um, I'll tell her about all this. I haven't talked to her about all this yet. I tried to leave the anger out of it because I wanted to go help her out. So I went over there and uh, got her hooked up on my AAA, and then we were sitting and talking and it was a pretty intense conversation and this homeless guy walked by outside and I looked over and I thought, man, the only reason that I'm not, you know, I said this to her, the only reason I'm not inviting that guy into the car with us to get warm is because I'm afraid. She said, yeah, and we just watched him walk. And I thought, I just, I felt compassion. Just this old guy. So then AAA got there. And we got out of the car. And uh, he was walking by again. Like in the same direction. And we made eye contact the first time. So he was walking by again. And I just... I can't remember if he said something to me. He said something to me. And I said, yeah. And I walked over to him and we started talking. His name's Tyrone. And we just hung, we were hanging out. It was real. It was just, he was telling me how he had been downtown and got beat up, um, got dragged across the ground, and he was showing me how his arms were scraped up. And then when I first met him, he told me he had a wife and kids, one that was five and one that was four, but it was bullshit. Like, I could tell. He, it was just something he said. Later on in the conversation, he told me that he had a, a son that was in prison. And we talked for a long time. The whole time the AAA was working on the car, they had to fix a man's tire, put a new tire on, get all our information. And we just kept talking. I kept telling him about how I think that we're the same, he and I. I mean, everyone. We're all the fucking same. We're in different situations, but we're all people. And it's ridiculous, that, and I told him that I, the first time he walked by, I wanted to invite him into my car to get warm, but I, the only reason I didn't was a fear, and he was like, oh, no, no, no. I said, no, it is. It's sociological fear. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for myself because, I don't know, I didn't, and then that was, we talked more about, went on, but like now I'm thinking, I'm, I'm afraid because I think uh, poverty breeds desperation because when we're not getting our needs met, like shelter, food, we, we get desperate. I mean, I do, even if I'm just hungry. You know, when people are starving or people are homeless, 
that breeds desperation. It does. It does. But it doesn't mean that we can't connect with people that are desperate. They're just people. We're all just people. And then I talked to him for a while more. And he said, look at you. You're, you're a leader. You're standing a foot away from me and look, making eye contact with me. And I d felt kind of ashamed, but I, I said, you're, you're a leader too. You have complete control. You have control. And it was, he just, the eye contact he made, he, he, we just looked at each other. Dude, it was so intense. I, I've never done that before. I've never just walked up to a guy that is walking along the street at four in the morning by a mobile gas station and just started ta opening up and listening and learning. He came all the way up from downtown. He just walked up here because it, because in LA, from what I've heard, I think this is what happens is the cops drive around. This is what happens. It's got to be. The cops drive around looking for homeless people. They pick them up and they take them downtown and drop them off. And that's how LA works. But nobody wants to be down there because it's just fucking chaos. It's bedlam. So he came up here to Hollywood where it's a nicer area. And because he made the journey, he and I met because I decided to go help Amanda out. Then it turned out Amanda had a spare and her tire got fixed and I gave him 20 bucks. I went into my car to get some change. I looked at my wallet and all I had was like 320s and I thought, you know what? I have money. And he doesn't. I don't need that $20. It's just fucking money. It's fucking money. It comes and it goes. That's what it's for, is to help people. You help yourself first and then you help others. It's never to hold. It's never to keep as paper in your wallet. And I felt weird after giving him the 20. He went crazy and I was like, dude, it's just money. But like saying that, I think trying to say that to someone that lives in poverty, that doesn't have any, it's not just money. It's, it's food and it's hope. Perhaps, if it's given for the right reason. If money's given with, with also with, with conversation and with emotion and with inspiration. I think that we, the power that we have is limitless as human beings. What we can accomplish on this planet what we can do for people, what we can do for humanity. By people, I mean myself as well as others. It's all happening together. I'll never forget him. He was missing teeth down here. All right, Amanda's up. So, and I got water boiling. I'm going to make some pasta. So, I'm going to get going. She's leaving tonight. I'm taking her to the airport, and then uh, I've got the place to myself for two weeks. I'm kind of scared. It's gonna be sad. It'll be nice, but it'll be kind of sad. See you later.